I've built a bot that logs into your Spigot account and analyzes the entire site to find out which premium resources are being sold the most. And in this video, I'm not only going to give you the entire code, I'm going to be showing you how I did that. And I'm going to be showing you how you can basically create a bot to log into any site and analyze any content on it. The reason for this is that I was very interested in knowing how many purchases per day do the most popular resources have. And if you log into Spigot, unfortunately, this piece of data is not available. The closest that we can get, we can look at the time of submission of the resource, for example, May 19th, 2024, and then we get a number of downloads. And if I divide the difference of days between this date and today, divided by the amount of downloads, I'll end up with roughly rough estimate. And I'm not saying that this number is exactly right, because maybe downloads can be more than just one equals purchase. Maybe this, this is over inflated, but you'll end up with like a very rough estimate on how many purchases uh, these resources have per day. By the way, guys, this is not a new attempt. Maxim, the developer behind plugins like Featherboard has actually made a similar scrapper many years ago. However, they, he stopped updating it four years ago. You can still go to his GitHub and you can have a look at how it works. It is way more advanced, but it unfortunately no longer functions. And we're going to be using Eclipse because it is the world's the best IDE because it looks the best. I mean, look at the icon design. Guys, this is incredible. It's It's been the same for the last 20 years. Obviously, I'm kidding. Welcome to this video. I'm not going to be coding everything line by line because it would take me about four hours, but I'm going to be walking you through the exact code line by line so that you understand it if you are familiar with coding in Java. Now, this is not a Minecraft plugin. This is a standalone program. It is actually built in Java. It, it is using Maven and it uses Java 21, although it is going to work on Java 8 as well if you need to. Now, it contains uh, three dependencies, Lombok, you already know what that is. If not, just Google that. Basically, Lombok will generate code for you. Then it uses something called HTML unit, which is the bot itself that can log in to your account and can scrape any website, including those that require JavaScript, those that have Cloudflare and all sorts of things. And then finally, we have Bungie Court library. The reason for this is that Bungie Court has phenomenally simple YAML configuration within it. And I'm actually using it to store a database file of all the scrapped resources so that when I just want to print results from the last scrape, I can just uh, load it from a database. I don't have to wait for 15 minutes for the bot to do the work. And then we have a bunch of compil compilation plugins. I don't have to explain this because this is just the simple stuff to get the jar out. Although I'm never going to do that because we're just going to be running uh, the entire thing within our IntelliJ or Eclipse for that matter. Then we have a class called resource info, which simply stores information about a downloaded premium plugin information. It has the plugin name. Obviously it's got the plugin URL. It's got its purchases. Although this is not precise because we equate this to the amount of downloads. As I said, it has the submission date as well as a method mathematically calculating downloads per day or should be purchases per day in accordance with the field, even though it's not exactly correct. And then get published days ago method as well as the two methods that will simply make it very easy to save it into a YAML as well as load it back. By the way, I do have YAML configuration video on this channel if you need to rehearse your skills. Basically what this will do will turn this class's fields into a simple hash map. And then here you go, here comes the main class. So the main class has a main method as you guessed it, because this is not a micro plugin, this is a stand standalone program. And you can launch the main class if you just launch, if you debug this as a Java application, IntelliJ has a similar setup. And then I have a bunch of fields which you can change if you just want to use the code without actually understanding it, which you shouldn't. So first thing, it has a start page, it has the end page. So basically, which page right here you want to start parsing at, I want to be starting at the 
one and i want to be finishing at the last one which is actually 79 but i'm just going to set it to 80 just in case there's more resources approved in the meanwhile and then resource limit list so at the end you've seen in the video at the beginning i've printed all the resources there is just too many resources i think that there is like 1200 so we just want to cap it to the to the top 500 and we also want to cap it to the top 500 that have been released in the last year very interesting to spot trends very interesting to sort of see what's hot what is selling as of last year or maybe you can just have it in the last 60 days that is two months if you so desire and then we have cookies so basically we have to bypass cloudflare and we have to basically log you in into spigot so if you'll you'll notice that if i log in on an incognito window not only the the cloud flare is blocking the site but there's also a request uh, there's also a redirect and there is also a login right so a bunch of steps that we have to do easiest way to to actually bypass that is to log in into your browser and copy the cookies put it back to java and pretend that we are a real google chrome the way we can do that is we can basically just right click go to inspect go to application go to cookies open up spigot and then copy the value of these three so the cf clearance the value i'm just going to copy paste it right here right you do you you do yours zenforo session this is the xf session and then zenforo user is right here so make sure to paste these three then we got a file resources config just a couple of fields to help us with the program we then simply load the config i don't have to explain this because this is basic configuration stuff but basically this will simply take a list of stored resources on your disk turn it turn that hash map into resource info class and load it then we got the connect method which is the meat of this program so we have to basically uh, pretend that we are google chrome the way we can do that we can create a new web client using html unit we can then go inside the browser browser version builder begin to build as a chrome and then we need to em emulate the user agent as well so what is my user agent right we, if you google that you can actually copy this paste it right here and then since we are opening the bot on the same computer that we have google chrome your ip should be consistent and then bypasses the cloudflare check because cloudflare uh, thinks that we are still actually connecting from the browser a sneaky little trick then we can disable unnecessary logging you don't have to do that then we can disable javascript cookies and downloading images to make sure it loads as quickly as possible we need to enable redirects as i've shown you at the beginning the cloudflare messes up with the url a bit and then we have to actually load these three cookies into a cookie manager set the cookie manager and finally start parsing at the first page then we got a parse method if we reach the final page we're just going to print results then we need to get the page so we need to connect to this entire page so again if i go right here into resources premium and i sort it by submission date this is the page that i end up with if i go to second page you'll notice the page appearing at the end so i just copied this over paste it right here and then deleted the page number and made it dynamic and then i simply open up inspector and i see that the resources are inside the resources list inside resource list item visible right resource list item visible and i want to query all this is basically using css selectors so let's just call them boxes and i iterate for each of these and then we're inter interested in getting the title so how do we get the title we just find the title tag and inside there's another tag so i'm just going to get the content of that so content and then unfortunately i, I do got i do gotta clean the title because there's a lot of junk on spigot so we can delete all the versions all the unicode all the emojis so just the ones you can see here so that we end up having just op daily events a little bit of a cleanup you can use chat gpt for that uh, same for removing the text from url so basically this is the url and we need to get rid of that to save a space because all you got to do is you have uh, the resource id because if i go to that website speaker mc automatically appends uh, the current resource url so that is also unneeded and then we, we then we also got uh, two other methods to convert uh the date if i try to open up the date published you can see that the title attribute is actually this it's not actually the long time in milliseconds so we're going to convert that and by the way i just use chat gpt for all of these four methods so can you
right? So that's what we do. We get these informations. We remove the text from the URL. We clean the title. Then we get the purchases. Then we get the submission as a as a title attribute. And then we convert it to Unix. We skip resources already saved into the database, load it as a resource info, put it to the field, and finally, after each page, save the config. Right? Once we're done, we can simply print the results from the field right here, and then we can simply delete resources with no purchases, older than uh, the given limit and then we can sort them by they and we can also cap them to the top 500 i've simply done i don't know how to describe that this, this is a simple trick they'll simply format the stuff in the console so that it's nicely indented and uh, then finally we save the config all right are you ready let's crack into it let's run it again and see what happens all right so i'll debug this as a java application and oh my goodness you can see how fast this is connecting to Spigot. So you've got to be careful with this. If Spigot decides to throttle you clicking or simulating that you're opening these pages so fast, what you can do before you go to the next page, you can type in thread and you can actually simulate that you wait for, I don't know, five or seven seconds. So just a little trick, but we don't need to do that because it works for now. And then you can see that the database file is getting quite huge. And I believe now we're done because we've reached page 79, and then it actually will print the 263, 263 resources sort, sorted by purchases uh, per day in the last year. And you can see player warps, advanced chat, AI, seasons, jobs, chat again, health bar, whatever that is. So sometimes my methods don't give the best results. Again, the, my code is on GitHub, so please feel free to fix that if, you, if you'd if you like. And this is gonna give you excellent idea what to look for, all the trends and stuff like that. You can use the resource to connect to any website, obviously. Be mindful about how you're using it. I'm not responsible for any banned account if you you know misuse it or whatever. And uh, use it responsibly. The only sort of purpose behind why I did that, I literally just wanted to know what plugins are being downloaded in the last year because the markets have shifted and I did a survey and I wanted to compare the results from the survey to actual results on Spigot MC to see what is hot, what is selling, because we are actually making a new plugin for you guys that will be out next month. That's it for me for today. I hope that you enjoyed this different video, very different. And if you want to join me on a learning to code, becoming self-sufficient, becoming a hacker, I, I guess it's not really hacking, but becoming very, very efficient in Java, join my class called Project Orion. Not only it has all the videos. It also has myself personally joining twice per week on Zoom to help you and give you live coaching that you need to move way faster than you'd ever do on any Udemy course. So I'm going to leave you a link to that course in the video description. Until next time, take care.